Aloha, friends, and welcome to a very special interview that needs to be talked about all over the world. So watch this, share this with your friends, because this is pretty mind-blowing how medicine, food is changing how medicine is happening. But my name's Maria, this is Craig Emmerich, and I'm a nutritionist who specializes in the keto and carnivore lifestyle. And we've been helping people for over 20 years, and we're so grateful because we met this amazing man, Hal, who is changing how to treat patients, changing how to treat sick people without medicine and more based off of food and movement. So Hal Kramer, we are so honored that you made time for us today. I can't tell you how much honored I am to be on this uh, this podcast or YouTube with you guys because a lot of what I'm doing is just taking what you guys publish and putting it into practice in my assisted living homes. So it's not like I'm doing any rocket science out of here. I'm just grabbing the, all the experts I can, and you guys are a huge part of it. Well, it's but one it, thing to say that we want it to happen, but you actually putting it into motion is really important. So like, tell yeah, you I mean, this. what I was going to say is that, you know, you, you've gone against the grain, yeah. a lot of grains here to do this in a setting, which we've always wanted to see happen in this kind of setting. But, you know, there's a lot of forces against it. So a lot of props to you for taking the initiative to do and that. When I first heard about your assisted living homes, I thought it was one. But how many do you have? I have four. But, I mean, they're not big. They're residential homes we've converted into assisted okay. living. So ten licensed for 10 beds in each one. That's amazing. Awesome. And this is in Arizona? Yep. It's around Phoenix or the suburbs of Phoenix. Oh, that's awesome. Like, what made you, like, decide to do something like this? And and tell us more about what you do. Okay. Um, yeah. So I run four assisted living homes, like we were talking about. Um, two in a town called Surprise. Arizona has some interesting town names. Yeah, I like um, that. One in Goodyear and one in Mesa. Um, I used to have five. I sold one two years ago. It was just getting too hectic for me. Um, so I... Uh, you know, I got into this business really as a real estate investment. I was um, flipping properties and doing some rental stuff on um, renting the kids up in at the University of Minnesota. We were living up in, near Minneapolis at the time. And another investor came up to me and said, um, hey, you should look into assisted living. You know, the, um, the cash flow is better and your tenants don't kick indoors and have keg parties. Yeah. And I was like, Sounds interesting. Um, we wanted to move down to Phoenix for a long time. My kids were starting to go to Arizona State and uh, really wanted to get out of the cold of Minnesota, as yeah. you guys know, from Wisconsin. And um, mm -hmm. it just all came together as a real estate investment. But then when I got into it, you know, I took care of my grandmother and my grandfather and things like that when they were still alive. And I just couldn't believe, like, so all we do is just feed them medicine and put them in front of the TV, you know, and collect rent. And I'm like, that just seems wrong to me. You know, when I'm renting to kids in college, they want to be left alone. So you know, I'd like to do that. But you could tell that it's just like, well, let's just, you know, follow the regulations and warehouse them until they pass away. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's that's just not right from a human perspective. So. And I don't want to disparage this whole industry. There's there's so many great, compassionate people I meet, from assisted living operators to hospice people to medical professionals to nurses, uh, you know, you name it. But there's a system and a you know regulations, and this is how it's supposed to be done. And it's never, you know, this is what we need to do to strive to make them better. It's this is what we need to do to comply with the regulations. And, and I'm like, we can do so much better than this. And, and ever since I've been reaching out and trying to find people who agree with me and then saying, you know, help me do this. And I guess yeah. that's how I found you too. Hey everyone. We are on a little safari here in Africa and I got a little friend right behind me here eating some, uh, grass and some trees he's not a um he's not a carnivore uh but if you are it's great to keep your electrolytes up and especially when you travel if you keep your electrolytes up 
uh, it really helps. I actually personally find I don't go number two as often if I don't bring my electrolytes on, uh, along when I travel. I'll go two three days without. But Element is great for travel. It's easy to pack. We really like it. And uh, if you use the, if you go to drinkelement.com, oh, watch out, <laughs> slash Keto, Keto Maria. Maria, you can get a free sample pack with order. Um, so check it out, drinkelement.com slash Keto Maria, and get a free sample pack with any order. Well, that's great. So you basically feed them carnivore, or is it keto, or what is it? I, 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 I'm on an endless sales pitch. Um, okay. So I have people who, like you and I, Maria, did a little video, and I sent it to all my residents of, you know, this is why a ketogenic carnivore diet's really good for you. I, I got some great feedback from that. I got some really like, don't you dare give my mom that feedback. Yeah. And, you know, so I can't just go, okay, they're going to all eat this and you don't have a say in it. Cause I, I, I got it still cash flow in my business. So I kind of say, a, we're not a restaurant. Everyone can't have their own meal. We can't, we just can't do that no. logistic. But we're gonna, I'm gonna try to serve nutritious meals. If, if A, if your doctor says you have to eat a certain way, I'll accommodate that, I have to. B, if, you're fit, if the family says, I don't want my mom doing this, I want my mom or dad doing that, we'll, we'll sort of make a base meal and then add or subtract different items yeah. to make them happy. Um, you know, ultimately it's pleasing the customer. But the ones who are open to it or ones who don't say anything, um, we're going to feed them at least ketogenic meals. Um, I've got some, and then I've got mostly guys, uh, but one amazing girl success story um, that we put on the carnivore diet, at, mostly for weight loss purposes, but we see them healing up a whole bunch of other stuff too. So um, it's... I wish I could do everyone keto or everyone carnivore, but I can't. I'm also I'm working with a very specific dementia protocol to help people try to get their memories back. And the company I have used that helps me do that is very much more uh, a keto kind of company than a than a carnivore. So I've got a wide range of food that I'm doing. Nice. Can I ask what? What are the fears of the ketogenic diet? Do you from from people that you're hearing? I'm sorry, Craig. What did you say? From from the people that are pushing back, what are the reasons, or what are the what are they telling you? Um, they're they're saying a ketogenic diet is only for epileptics. My mom doesn't have epilepsy. Okay. Or I get um, my mom's already lost some weight. I don't want her to become anorexic. Okay. And, and I tell them. I've gained 10 or 12 pounds on the carnivore diet and the ketogenic diet probably would do the same for them. You yeah, know, it it's it. so yeah, it's, or, you know, ketoacidosis comes up, mm. um, which it has the same four letters, but other than that, the similarities kind of end. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it, it's a lot of sort of the mainstream, this carnivore is a fad diet. Um, you know, the meat one is all kinds of cholesterol, heart attack, yeah. um, you know, no fiber. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you've heard it all before. Yeah. So do you, do you try to answer them or do you just kind of or, respect them? I try to, but I don't push it real hard because, you know, I, I think diets like religion and politics oh, in yeah. some way that, you know, they're set in their ways. No matter how hard you push, the more they're going to be like, He's going to sneak this in. I better, you know, get out of here, kind of thing. So yeah. I, I, I try to provide information. I also, um, people see the success others are having, and they That's go, cool. oh, well, maybe I'll try that. Well, what I will say, you know, we've been doing this for over twenty years, and we have mm -hmm. never spent a dollar on advertising. It's, it's all, all word of mouth, mouth, right? And it's that yeah. exactly what you're saying. And this is, I think, where the power will come in with your. As you show more and more examples, your testimonies, people are right. going to be like, 
wow, I want to see my mom do yeah. that. Or this I want to see my, you know. This is why I love you on social to. media because I love that you're posting those testimonies on social media. This is why we always share them because they're amazing. And that's what everybody goes wild for them because we Melissa. Need to see more of that. What, what, did Melissa lose 80 pounds in only months? No, no. 35. 35 but there was one that lost like 80 pounds uh, yeah, well, we had a, a lady lose 230 pounds in nine months wow that was in nine months success. incredible nine months. yeah so, carnivore and fasting um yeah. we had yeah. a we have a wonderful trainer that works with um the high high weight individuals and sure. uh we're, and is a huge fan of the carnivore diet so he awesome. really gets some success with them I think movement is so healing for your brain too. Like you said, you know, I, I've had grandparents where they were just sat in front of the television and kind of just waiting for their life to end, it kind of felt like. And I I feel like you're giving them the tools to keep living, you know, keep moving yeah. your body and giving you a reason to wake up in the morning, you know? Yeah, I think Melissa's got three decades left in her life or so the way she's going. You know, and she came to us not knowing, you know, maybe we're talking a couple of years or so. So yeah, talk about I mean, Melissa. Think yeah. of a better yeah. gift to give to someone. That is a gift for yeah, sure. Yeah, let, let's talk a little more about Melissa and what happened there. Or some but, of your so, favorite testimonies in general that, like yeah. people that you, you've changed their life. Well, Melissa was a superstar. So let's start with her. All right. Um, she, she heard, her, her sister heard me on another podcast. Um, called me up out of the blue and said, um, I think my sister would really benefit from what you guys are doing. Um, so we called Melissa and, and right from the start, you could tell she was run down. Um, she had depression for 20 years. She had, um, she was overweight. She um, had tremors in her hands. Um, and she was, she loved your story, uh, Maria, because she said, you know, I was living on ice cream. <laughs> and yeah. she, I think you were saying when you were young, you worked in a coffee shop or something and, and yeah. you treat yourself all the time. But, all the time. Uh, yeah. So she's like, I really want to change my life and I'll do whatever you ask me to do, um, which is a great attitude. You know, I get a lot of, mm, I'm not sure about that kind of thing. But she was jumped in headlong. So we got her hooked up with this company called the Mind for All Seasons that helps with the dementia. Oh yeah, and she couldn't hold a conversation. Like she'd repeat questions to us three times every time we called her. Um, so we hooked her up with this company. They, um, for about two or three weeks before she moved down from the Washington state area, and um, they did a whole bunch of blood work. They take like 15 vials of blood, do all kinds of markers for it. And uh, from that, create a big report of here's what we need to do to, to change you. Um, we brought her down after she got the report and everything, because that gives us a plan. Uh, brought her into our home. Um, I, at the time, I was working with a, a local lady who cooked for us, but was kind of doing it on a voluntary basis. And um, she had family commitments and things like that. So it wasn't very consistent. So I just, I'm like, if we're going to do this, I, I was worried my caregivers, you know, they're wonderful people, but I was asking them to cook too. And they, um, you know, they've got to clean, they've got to change people. They've got to get them in and out of bed. They got to dress them. They got to shower them. So by the end of the day, dinner looks awfully appealing to make peanut butter, jelly sandwiches or macaroni and cheese. So I was like, well, we're not going to have that. I'd rather have the caregivers work on therapies rather than, um, than meal prep. So I, ha I hired some other cooks um, and I sat them down and I gave them your cookbooks and said, this is what we need to make. OK, mm -hmm. the, the uh, company I'm working with said a ketogenic diet. And, and I, I talked to Melissa about um, doing a carnivore thing. And she was like, I'm not going to just eat me. <laughs> I need some veggies. Every so yeah. it wasn't a nutrition thing. She just like, I, I can't do that. And so I'm like, fair enough, we'll do the keto thing. So these cooks are, are making amazing meals from your recipes and everything. We signed up with your ketoadapted.com and started coming up with meal plans. And I just love, you know, we could, I text the cooks and say, how many carbs today? And, you know, they yeah. meal by meal, nine carbs, 11 carbs, two carbs kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
for grams. So um, we started that. We we started a bunch of other therapies. I bought uh, a red light setup. Um, we have something called audio visual entrainment, which is uh, based on old World War II radar operators who are watching yeah. those screens go around and they just fall asleep watching them. And it's really, if you show your brain a certain wavelength of light, it calms your brain and relaxes it and heals it. So we have these glasses and headset um, that our people wear and it helps them sleep. It helps them get into a better circadian rhythm because people with dementia uh, have this thing called sundowning where they get very agitated late in the afternoon, early evening, just when you want them to go to bed. Um, yeah. But it also helps their brain heal and, and relax. So it can, it can work on healing. Um, we also got a sauna. Um, and then we started taking her to hyperbaric oxygen training as well, therapy, not training. Um, and so, and then we, I have a personal trainer that came in and exercised. Like you said, Maria, I don't want them sitting around. I want them moving. Um, and just getting them out in the sunshine and fresh air when it's not 115 here in Phoenix. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So um, we did all that with Melissa. She was with us for about six months. You could tell she was getting better and better. Um, the first, after maybe a month or two, she went out to coffee. Her daughters live really close to us. That was another big selling point for her. She went out to coffee with one of her daughters, spent three hours with her, and her daughter said, Mom, you haven't forgotten a single thing since we've gone out in those three hours. Um, her, her hand shake, the tremor she was having in her hand went away. She dropped about 35 pounds. She came to us walking with a cane. She walked... She walks totally normal now. In fact, I have a video of her walking to go to the airport, go back home, throwing away the cane. Oh, uh, that's amazing. But most of all, her memory came back. And we did a memory test with her. Um, it was called the slums test, which is, I think, the St. Louis University mental score or something like that. Um, when she first came in, you get can score 0 to 30. Um, 30 is like totally normal. Your brain's fine. Zero is like you're really deep into dementia. She scored about a 15. So zero to 20 is you pretty much got cognitive decline or dementia. Uh, yeah. 21, I think, through 26 is you have mild cognitive decline, the early stages. And 27 through 30 is you're like us, normal. Well, when she came to us, she scored a 15. About four or five months into it, she scored a 21. And then when she left, she scored a 27. So, uh, yeah, we were absolutely, I mean, I was, when she scored the 27, I was texting everyone I knew that was involved with her. You won't believe this. So, um, yeah, so she's living back on her own in, in Washington. Um, we're trying to convince her to come down here and live with her daughters. Um, but we text probably weekly or so just to see how she's going. I know she follows you guys like crazy. Um, she sends me pictures of her meal. What's greatest thing is she's totally adapted this and she makes ketogenic and car carnivore meals for herself now and loves it and she's looked up where a hyperbaric chamber is near her you know and she's just it taking the whole lifestyle you know hook line and sinker and it's that's, it's so I think that's where people get hung up is when you know we're holding their hand or you're actually taking care of them but then they actually have to go and do it by themselves then it's tough you know, the ice cream slips in or something. And that, that is my question. Did you actually make my ice cream for her ever? <laughs> I have not. I, oh. I hate to say it, but I'm a, uh, I, I'm like, a, I know it's keto ice cream, but no. <laughs> you know, I figure, yeah. you know, oh, you know once you get out and you're doing okay, great. Do that. Make yourself some keto ice cream. I know I walked in on my caregivers one time and they bought some keto chocolate chip cookies from the store and they're like, it's keto. And I'm like, throw them away. You know, because I no, think. Yeah. Ice cream store. yeah. Yeah. But these guys. The keto these, ice cream. These people in my home Sorry. are pretty sick. So I'm like, let's get hardcore here. When they start getting better, we'll ease up. And so I know yeah. I could look more into that. I mean, I'm doing stuff like I'm trying to sneak liver into some of their meals and stuff. And, and I was caught right away. They're like, no way. <laughs> You're not serving this. No. So I'm learning. No, right no, now. I totally and your palate's going to change. So if you keep feeding it that ice cream desire, it's never going to go away. But she was it. there for how long? 
six months. She was six months. Six months. Yeah. Her palate, I mean, your taste buds change over about every 15 yeah. days. So her taste buds are probably way gone from the ice cream. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's I'm trying to help. Because I look at ice cream now and I'm like regular ice cream. I'm like, I just don't mm. desire it the way I used to. So that's what people don't understand. I, th I think don't understand well enough is you know especially with like our kids we start feeding them french fries when they're in the stroller don't say ice we. cream and other people saying we as a society yeah uh you know and, and and kids their palate shifts to this just always sweet like yeah. you always got to have that sweet next hit and, and we know that the more sweets you give someone the more you need to get that you know trigger again yeah. and, and so it just escalates and you can like shift all cool. of that away yeah yeah definitely like a drug. it really is i mean i remember my kids when they were really young playing sports and it was hey whose turn is it to bring the rice krispie treats to practice today you know That's one thing i don't like about the football and stuff like they're always having s'mores and this and that yeah, and my boys are like no thank you but it's sad that it always has to be like rewarding them with food like their dogs or something I yeah oh it is i mean i took my son played hockey in minnesota and We'd have practices at five in the morning, and sure enough, one dad would show up with a box of donuts, you know, for him afterward. And I, yeah. I wasn't that into nutrition at the time, so I didn't think about it. But looking back on it, I'm like, man, this is the fast track to my assisted living homes. I mean, exactly. I, have, I have people as young as in their late thirties, early forties, sometimes moving in, and wow. I'm, I'm just thinking we can do so much better than this. Well, yeah. I do have to tell you, whenever I, I talk about you all the time and people tell me all the time, can I just go and stay there even though I'm not sick? Well, I just want to eat somebody to make me the food. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, they know that it's healing and they, you know, not everybody likes to cook. So it's, but yeah. here's the thing too. And I, I want to say this to your, the people that are cooking for you. I mean, if you don't like to cook, I like people get a slow cooker, get an instant pot. Cause guess what? It does it for you, you know? Yes. Oh, there's so many. Your recipes are so easy. I mean, I like showing them. Look, prep time, five minutes, eight minutes. You know, yeah. how hard is this to be? Yeah, it might sit for six or eight hours in a slow cooker, but you don't have to do anything during oh. that time. And that's one of the things that is nice about the carnivore lifestyle. If they want to go there, it makes it really easy. Yeah. I mean, put some meat on, throw some spices on, boom, you know, 10 minutes, you're done. done. It's really easy. Oh, my wife's thrilled with the carnivore. She's like, now you cook all the time. <laughs> So, yeah. There you go. There you Does go. she eat this way too? Pardon me? Does she eat this way too? Um, I'm working on her. She oh. does a lot when it's available, but she's like, you know, we got family coming over, we got a friends, so don't look weird in front of them, okay? No. So, um, <laughs> That's funny. Can I ask what uh, some of the favorite recipes are amongst the patients you see? Um, there was... I can't tell you specifics, but there's a Mexican casserole yeah. I remember mm. that we had. Uh, we just had some beef rib mole nice. the other day. Oh, that nice. was really good. <laughs> nice. um, yeah, I, um, let's, I'm trying to think what other was a, a big one. Um, the, uh, I, I'll have to get you a list. I don't know. Cause yeah. they, 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 I just like to inspire others. And I don't, but I know I brought that Mexican recipe home, that Mexican casserole, and my wife, like, you need to get this recipe. I'm like, it's in fruits cookbooks. I just, I ask because I like to inspire people that it's not just a steak. It's not just, you know. It can be a lot more. It is, it, it's very oh, flavorful. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, casseroles are really big because it's very easy to chop them up into 10 slices and, and feed it for my caregivers because they, they have them, they bring them out of the oven like that. It's very easy to pass those out mm. um, and those you know, make extra and i freeze them because yeah. those usually freeze well. around our house yeah we'll make a triple batch and then you put two of them in the freezer yeah. and you know make the have the oven ready and a lot of those type of things got casseroles or lasagnas uh they're yep. almost better when preheated you right? know lasagna that's a huge that's a huge yeah. big hit with lots of meat yeah yeah um, i love it but yes when i uh, like my cooks have family and they mm -hmm. have commitments and stuff so if they're out for a little while they'll they'll make extra batches and we'll freeze them exactly like you said too they're not professional chefs they're 
neighborhood ladies who have some extra time to come over. So That's sweet. I, I'm not a professional chef either, and people think I'm cooking all the time, and I'm not. I'd rather be at the beach, and so I'm just very smart about it. And I'm more shy. I'm not uh, someone who likes to throw my camera on all the time and do videos, but I'm I'm trying to just to show people like, hey, I'm a busy working mom that homeschools children, and I'm, I still get it done. Like, don't say you don't have time to cook yeah. because yeah. I'm the one that doesn't have you time. You have to, to make cook. the priority. Yes. To, to, you have to make it a priority that, you know, health is important. Yes. That, exactly. That's the key is making it a priority. I mean, if you count the amount of time people spend on one of these, yeah. they got time to cook. Put it down. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have... My homes is, there's not really much of that. No, true. Yeah. Um, but do you have another testimony from one of your patients that you can really, well, you know? Talk, yeah, I mean, I, I've had, um, like, I've got three or four guys who um, do the carnivore diet. They've all lost a minimum of 35 pounds that they they had a lot of trouble doing that before. Um, one's getting out of his wheelchair and walking now. He's He's been in a wheelchair since he was five. Wow. Um, oh, my God. I've got, yeah, I've got a, this other one, is, he's like, we've pretty much eliminated his diabetes medicine. Um, we've got one that his blood sugar went down by 50 points. Um, we've got uh, another lady who went off her diabetes medicine. Um, and then this girl who lost 230 pounds, she came this way in about 550. Um, and through carnivore and fasting and everything like that we got her down to 320. Um, she had been staying in a, a like skilled nursing facility for about nine years before she came to us oh, and wow. now she's living in an independent facility on her own nice. so um, yeah that was really cool we have this personal trainer his name's daniel magyar um dmprotrainer.com if you're interested but he he is able to make amazing transformations. He lives in Las Vegas, puts people on the carnivore diet, has weekly calls with them. We we hired him to do this, and then um, we uh, and then we had another guy who's, who's six fifty. He came to us about a month or two ago. He he lost fifty pounds very quickly. Um, Ready? Yeah. So he um, so Daniel's like two hundred ninety pounds, but like seven percent body fat or something. Um, uh -huh. So he he's very into the exercise thing, which I think helps too, to, like you said, to keep moving and everything. So um, yeah, we've sent probably seven people home over the years. I'm hoping for more now. Uh, actually, yeah. less would be eight. Um, I mean, I just started. Let's just feed them salads and meat instead of ice cream and cookies, you know. And let's yeah. take that away. We were seeing results with that. Just eliminating the sugar and a bunch of the processed food, but um, it's really accelerated with the keto and carnivore stuff. Well, that's, you know, and it's, you know, we have a personal, you know, stake in this as well. Like your, uh, Maria's grandmother had uh, Alzheimer's and she was put in a home and they fed her all that junk. And I you know, tried, it but... was rapid decline. And, you know, that was just the way it was done. And the same thing with your... My grandpa died of the, uh, type 2 diabetes. But when I would talk to him, when, you know, and he still lived till he was 90. When I would talk mm -hmm. to him, he's like, no, Maria, I'm going to eat my popcorn. I'm going to drink my beer. Like, I want this. And he was not going... He's like, I know your food is good, but I want this. And so I wonder, do you get the pushback? Oh yeah, I have a bunch of people who just want, they're like, I'm 83 years old, you know, I, I'm i too old to change, I'm just gonna eat this. I mean, yeah. I have people who smoke cigarettes at, outside, but um, I'm not gonna convince everyone. I'm hoping as I get the word more and more, I can start, you know, hey, my home is for people yes. who really wanna fight this and get better, no. I've got, hundreds of other homes in the phoenix area if you want to just go watch tv and eat ice cream yeah. you know See, and that, that's what i was getting to on that is there wasn't another option for them no you know they're like your grandmother with alzheimer we marie and i we tried at that point we tried we were into this you know for many years at that point we knew how much diet and could change her and help her 
but there was no options for a, a home around us that could give an alternative, right? Or believed in us. Or believed it, in it. And so to have, an, a, at least have an option, yeah. I think is just outstanding. And and I think the, the word of mouth aspect of it, just like it did for us, keep spreading the stories, keep giving the examples of what can be done. That's what I was wondering. And you're going to get more people who want that for their mother, for their father well, than that. I mean, ultimately, I'd love to... Hey, why don't you go look on Maria and Craig's website, start making that food and stay home and get out, you know, avoid assisted living entirely. I mean, I hate to say it, but I'd love to destroy my industry. Well, have walls shut down and everyone live at home. That's what people want. We're working on it from both ends, right? We're trying to keep people from ending up there. But, you know, it's, there's a lot of people that are already at that stage and you've got to reverse it. And that's what you're right. doing. Yeah, I tell people I'm not worried about my industry going but anytime soon. It's, no, I'm not either. Sadly. Well, the obesity in the United States, I mean, right now the trend, I mean, trends just keeps going up. You know, you watch those uh, obesity maps of the United States, like state by state. 60% or at least. And uh, one of my recent presentations, I put it up in the, the projection in 2030 is over half the country will be obese, not overweight, obese. And then wow. you transform that map into the counties, county by county map of obesity. It's almost exactly the same as the map for life expectancy in the very wrong way. Like county by county, if you look at it and overlay them, they look like almost the same map. And the ones with more obesity are in the six, the, the range of uh, life expectancy was 62 to 82. And it was 20 year gap in life expectancy. And it almost perfectly correlated with the obesity map. So. I mean, it's 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 a huge problem. Yeah, like you said, it's not going away anytime soon, but it takes us to attack it from all ends. You know, trying to prevent people from getting there, and then you know, trying to help people that are already there. Yeah, and the temptations are so great out there, everywhere you look. But I don't feel like I'm missing out. Do you feel like you're missing out? Yeah. I no, don't feel I like. Feel, I feel for other people that they're missing out, because I I'm 56, and I feel like I'm. 25. I, I feel I go hiking up mountains in Phoenix with my 21 year old son, and you know, maybe pops can't quite keep up with him when he sprints ahead, but I can darn sure be really close and I can summit that peak just as easily as he can. So but, I'm not trying to brag, I'm just saying yeah. this stuff really helps. And I see people who are struggling with obesity and struggling with diabetes and struggling with all these issues. And I think you guys are the ones missing out. You know, there's so yeah. much of life still left in so you. Much of life. Yeah. And I feel like maybe it's because I, I cook more, but I there's nothing that I see that I can't make myself. Like, yeah. you know, when everybody else is having gelato, because I do these keto retreats, right? And everybody oh. goes and has gelato, and I'm like, oh, I'll have gelato when I get home, and I'm not going to feel like crap after I eat it because it's not it doesn't have sugar it doesn't change have, a couple ingredients yeah I just change it out yeah. a little bit I just I don't feel like I'm missing out at all oh, there's a great gelato shop just down the street from me yeah. here in Phoenix and we used to go to it all the time and now when I go to it I exactly what you said I, I'm either like I'm good or if I try something I'm like oh now I remember why I don't want to eat this not worth yeah. it no yeah no. a lot of that is back to what we talked about is shifting the palate once you cut that stuff out you yeah. crave it less you desire it less and it doesn't taste as good when you do have it so right right yeah i mean they call alzheimer's type 3 diabetes yeah it's definitely the sense of the, yeah it, it, the brain is no longer using glucose efficiently so it's starving of fuel and what else can right. fuel the brain Ketones. Mm -hmm. And so ketone, yeah. when you drive the ketones, it drives, uh, gives the brain a fuel source to start driving I again. I told that to my parents when my grandma first was diagnosed. 10 years ago. And, no, it was a lot longer than that. She died, ago. you know, six years ago. Um, But my parents were like, ho oh, hum, they didn't really say much. And then maybe five years later, Dr. Oz said it on his television show. And my mom <laughs> called and she's like, you know what Dr. Oz said? It's type three diabetes. Like, and yeah. I was like, I know. I did just, like eight years ago. <laughs> but they just don't want to hear it from their children, their family. Yep. Yeah, I I have that with my family members all the time. My brother and his wife are both doctors, so we oh, we have boy. experience oh. the base. I can't. Uh, I can't. So he's not like a 
we oh, just, gotcha, yeah. I don't know a ton about this okay. diet stuff. I was going to say, uh, the majority of healthcare providers, their biggest concern is outcomes. So will my patient come to me or leave me in better shape than they came to me in? And so I think that's, again, where the power of these examples and these testimonies, like, like Melissa, nobody's going to say you did anything wrong there. Like that right. was an incredible transformation. You can only look at the outcome and say, this is obviously great, greatly helpful to her, you know? But, but there's, there's a lot of inertia against it. I mean, every healthcare provider I talk to is like, what you're doing is fantastic. We love it. You know, keep doing it. But like the Melissa, one of the things they found um, was she was had very low hormone levels. So we were going to try to give her some hormone therapy to help that. And yeah. um, you know, the the doctor that came to our house that would okay all the prescription stuff said, "I'm sorry, but my insurance and our standard of care will not allow me to prescribe." hormones to women over 65 because they're uh, oh my gosh you're gonna they're gonna get breast cancer that's so if you look in all the studies that's not true and it's you know the studies show it's not true but it's the standard of care or it's the insurance company's requirement the the doctor said i you know we showed her the studies and she's like i agree with you but my insurance company won't let me do this so wow. keep the insurance so yeah, that's the, the system makes it very difficult to deviate from the standard of care, whatever that is. I am very familiar with that. My pre previous life as an electrical engineer, I worked in uh, healthcare informatics and then in uh, imaging software. And that's one thing that you found out very quickly is that it's a glacial pace at which healthcare changes their standards and their, you know, any kind of meaningful change. It, it takes, it, it's always decades behind but the science is even saying, you know, where they can get things to change. And so that's why, you know, there's going to be a role for us outside of healthcare for a long time, because it's going to take them a long time to come around to realizing that this really does work. I do want to point out one thing. I'm sure you see a lot of fibromyalgia. That's something I, I work with a lot. And a hundred percent of the time when it's usually women over a certain age and their testosterone is extremely low, as soon as they start testosterone therapy, their fibromyalgia symptoms go away. And this is 100% of the time, if they are able to get on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's just the connection of low testosterone to the fibro pain. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally believe it. I mean, everyone we test for hormones is low or deficient in, in some kind of hormone, whether it's testosterone, estrogen. We ate uh, pregnenolone, which I'd never heard of before I got into this. <laughs> Um, yeah, there. I am a big believer in that. I think the only well, potential risk factor is if they have a history of breast cancer. Oh, there's sure. a possibility it might come back, but other than that, if they don't, there's not really any evidence. That and the reason everybody you're seeing is low is because of what we feed them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all of your sex hormones are, are made from cholesterol. From cholesterol. And what have we told everybody for the last? Stop decades eating cholesterol. don't eat any cholesterol right and so I, 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 sorry go ahead not only don't eat any cholesterol but here take the statin on top of it yeah and lower it even more right and yeah. so you know of course everybody's hormones are tanking and, and they're, we're having all these issues right because you need the healthy cholesterol to make healthy hormones every man that i work with that is taking a statin drug also is taking viagra Yep. because it's lowering their testosterone so much because yeah. you need cholesterol to make testosterone and uh, progesterone and estrogen. It's just so frustrating. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I had a guy in my assisted living homes and he had a cholesterol overall cholesterol reading of 82. Oh, <gasps> he was on a statin. And I asked the doctor, what cholesterol number do they have to get to that you would take them off this statin? And they're like, well, there, there really isn't any guidance on that. <laughs> then why do you take this that long? Follow the money. Well, well, the thing is, we have we have uh, we train people to coach keto and carnivore because we want to get the word out there as much as we can, right? And get more people out pushing this the, the right uh, way. And uh, we just had an assignment this week for our coaches. The assignment mm -hmm. I, I picked was this study. They used the, well, the you know the PC, uh, PCSK9 inhibitors, the new super statin drugs. 
They yep. gave this guy who had heart disease, he had existing heart disease, I don't know, 50 something. And so plaque buildup. Lots of plaque, or a fair amount of plaque buildup in his arteries. They pushed his cholesterol to zero. So they zero. actually did push it down basically to zero. And he still had all the plaque. And guess what? It still progressed. His heart, to, heart disease still progressed and got worse. Plus so he's they, probably got a whole lot of other problems now oh. too. Well, it's no, been sure. shown that really low cholesterol is a leading cause uh, of cancer. Leading, leading uh, cause for cancer is that uh, much higher it's cancer rate. A lot higher incidence for Alzheimer's and dementia too. I mean, exactly. your brain is mostly brain? cholesterol. I believe that's Tons why my grandma Rosemary got Alzheimer's and never healed it is because she, my grandpa had his yeah. first heart attack at 32. And wow. so they, yeah, I know. They were told to never eat butter, never eat so, cholesterol, and so they were always margarine eating margarine and, and like just all the worst foods, and never, never whole eggs, never uh, red meat, none fats. of that. Never, never animal fats. And so, she, up until the day she died, she ate. I can't believe it's not butter. And I think that led to the issue, like you said, the the brain is the biggest center of cholesterol, and and there's tons of fat in the brain. I think those. Terrible oils are worse than sugar for people. Oh, I, I think so. We use a lot of uh, coconut oil, MCT oil, stuff like that, too, because that helps the ketones a whole lot. All the cholesterol. Uh, tastes good. I know I, it is. I know yeah. it is. Oh, no. Well, Pat, we want to just thank you so much for your time and jumping in. And can you want to see where people can find you? Because they're all going to want to. Come stay with you. Yeah, we'll put links below to all the air. Oh, I love too. the idea. Let's just open a house, bring a whole bunch of like-minded people in, and yeah. let's cook for them. I think that would be oh. interesting. Plus, cut my caregiving costs down. But um, I, my, my company's called A Paradise for Parents. Uh, my website is aparadiseforparents.com. And you can see a, there's a video right on the front page that includes Melissa in it of success yeah. stories with that. Um, I'm on Twitter, like you said, just at Hal Cranmer. Um, my Facebook is, if you look up a Paradise for Parents Assisted Living, I'm there. Instagram, I'm on Assisted Living Hal Cranmer, but I don't do that as much. And then um, I do like a, a daily newsletter five days a week of stuff we're doing in our home, latest things I'm just finding out. I'm not a medical professional. I'm just amateur researcher here um, of things that can help my people and it's you can go to bringmemoryback.com i have like a little checklist you can download of here's some cheap things you can do at home that can really diminish your chances of dementia or help someone you know that has dementia and um i guess that's it <laughs> hopefully okay. that's enough to well, make sure you all that below so and people can find Hal, it. if you want like a little holiday gift for your caregivers just uh send me their or your address i'll give you a bunch of books that you can just give away some of my cookbooks i mean oh, just you something, anything I'd love to hear them to some families too who are a little skeptical try anything. this and see yeah anything for you hal yeah. anything i really you appreciate it like and i'd like to say so many. i'd like to say the first time i met you maria you sent me a whole package with all your cookbooks that we're using now totally free and i was like this is the most beautiful lady in the world sorry craig i'm not trying to make you jealous oh, but that's that just, that's you. my that's my way to uh, that's my happy place is giving to people because there was a time we had nothing like i literally rode my bike to the library to start writing my books because we had nothing and so people wow. like you getting the word out just made made our adoption possible made our life possible so a little thing of giving you a box of books is nothing. Well, I mean, you didn't even know me, and I thought that was just an amazing act of kindness. So thank you. Well, we love what you're doing, yeah. and you know, keep up the amazing work, and really appreciate you coming on and talking to us. Yeah, thank you, well, Hal. I might, up, I might be up in Minnesota this summer visiting my son who lives up there. So if you guys are in Wisconsin, I'd love to drive over. Absolutely, yeah. I hope to see you in Phoenix on yeah, April twelfth. So everybody can visit Hal on April 12th at, in Phoenix at my Equip event. events. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you come to Maria's event, I'll be there and would love awesome. to talk to any of you about what we can do to help. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Hal. Thank you, guys. If you want to change your life like I've changed mine with food, I would be honored to help you. Many of you don't know that I was twice my size. I had acid reflux. I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. 
I had depression, I had IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, and food changed my life. And not only did that happen, I get to eat good food, right? Good food. So if you wanna eat good food, have perfected meal plans made by me, and personal help with supplements or modifications, if you have Hashimoto's, if you have uh, Graves, if you have IBS, if you have PCOS, contact me. I would be honored to help you. Um, you can go to keto-adapted.com and find a lot of different options there for personalized help or message me uh, by commenting below on this YouTube video or you can check me out at mariamindbodyhealth.com. Mahalo.